All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming to our talk today. We're going to be talking about managing fluid in a data center with the use of a liquid cooling cart. So to introduce myself, my name is Jared Wyatt, and I'm currently a mechanical engineer um, working here at Meta. Yeah, and this is Saurabh Kulkarni. I work at Meta as well in the operations integration team. We also have joining us today Chris Sue, who's a representative from Delta, who's been helping us uh, design this cart. All right. So why are we designing a liquid cooling cart? This is because of the lack of facility water in our current data centers. In order to, in order to use liquid cooling for our IT-enabled gear, we need to use what's called an AALC, or Air Assisted Liquid Cooling Rack. This prompted the need for a cart so that we could service the AALC rack when it's in our data center. Its primary functions are to fill, top off, and purge the rack. We need these different operations, whether the AALC rack is entirely empty, whether it needs to have the final amount of fluid or the reserve fluid filled in order um, to prevent any freezing during transportation, and then finally, to drain the rack for servicing. Now, this is a depiction of an AALC rack. You can see on the far right is the AALC rack itself, and then on the left is the AALC rack connected to a liquid-cooled IT gear. The rack acts as a fluid pump so that it could pump fluid into the gear without the need of facility water. And it is the primary reason that the liquid cooling cart is being designed. Now, some details about the cart. The cart was designed so that it was very similar to our current crash carts in our data centers. The width and the height are almost exactly the same, whereas the length is the primary difference due to the pumps and the reservoirs inside of the cart. So the operations, as I mentioned before, top off. This fills it up to fill up the volume that formerly had inert gas inside of the lines in order to prevent freezing during shipping. We have system fill, fully charges the rack, purge, which fully discharges the rack, and what I didn't mention before was compressed air. This is so if there's any remaining fluid in the fluid lines, we can push it out using the compressed air and ensure it's as drained as possible. Now, to call out some features of the cart itself, we have a front and back view. In the front on the left side, you can see our operating panel, which is where the user will control the cart and all of its functions. We have an extended work surface, which is something we have in our current crash carts, which allows the techs to have additional room to service their equipment. We have a small cabinet for any gear that the techs might have, whether it's small tools, multimeter, et cetera. And we have a large cabinet which has our auxiliary hoses, which allows us to do all of our fluid cycles, which I'll speak about a little bit more later. On the bottom, you can see our reservoirs. We have both a new and a used coolant reservoir. This is to avoid the contamination of fluid when we're filling a rack or when we drain it. That way, a rack will be drained into the used and new fluid will be pumped into a rack from the new. Then we have our compressed air pump and our fluid pump um, inside of the cabinet as well. On the rear, you'll see we have a manifold mount. This is to make servicing of the AALC racks easier because the manifolds are large and heavy. It's a lot easier to transport them by putting them onto the cart as well as having ESD casters on the bottom and, uh, and a cover. Now to talk about the functionality, first thing I'll call out is you can see an X over the AC power cable, and instead we have a built-in power supply. We're enabling the cart to use a UPS to make it easier to use inside of our data centers and to have a little bit less of a mess when you, if you were to have a long extension cord. There are also on the far right different connections you can see um, that the uh, cart connects to. This is for the auxiliary hoses I mentioned earlier. In order to allow for all the operations to, to work, we have three separate ports. The one on the top is for fill, the one in the middle is for compressed air, and the one on the bottom is to drain. So these are directed to the um, appropriate reservoirs. As well, for the QD sizes that we're using on this cart, we have CGB20 and SCG09. Now to talk a little bit more about the internal of the cart, we have the two reservoirs you can see here, um, as well as a filter, which is uh, important to ensure that as much um, debris that can end up in the coolant is drained as possible. And of course, you see our fluid pump, which punch, pumps the fluid both out of the new coolant reservoir and into the used coolant reservoir. As for storage, we have the cabinet in, uh, marked one for any hardware, and then on the bottom, we have those auxiliary hoses I mentioned. They connect to the ports that I showed in the previous slide, and I'm gonna talk about why we need so many in a second for our fluid cycles. You'll see that there are four cycles here. We have pre-charge, fill, drain, and purge. 
for pre-charge, this is when you have to connect the cart to a, to a, tunk, a tank, a tub of fluid. And once you connect it in there, you can fill the new coolant reservoir before you go and do a service operation. This would be at a stationary fill station. Then you have full fill, which you would take that coolant that you pre-charge into the cart, and you would then in, um, install it into a AALC rack. We have a drain function, which is for servicing. This would only be if you needed to entirely drain a rack. However, they do not need to be fully drained to be transported. And finally, we have air purge, which is to ensure that all the fluid from a drained rack is removed. Then we can talk a little bit about the operating panel. The cart operation is meant to be as simple as possible, so the carts don't ha the techs don't have to do much in order to use it. The switches here are push switches, so all you have to do is press it and the operation will begin or stop. We have three indications that allow the tech to know what's happening. One is a steady light, which shows that the operation is currently happening. A blinking light, which will tell you that the operation is completed. And then you have a red light, which will tell you if there's any warnings of an overpressure or a leak inside of the system. Now, you can also see on the right, there are some warning, uh, some warning lights as well. And those are the red um, warnings I was speaking about earlier. And on the far right in that image, we also have the power panel. Um, it has a key, so it can be locked so that there's security uh, if we don't want the cart to be used by anyone that can walk by and we want to designate who can use it. Additionally, highlighted in the blue box, there's an emergency stop button. So for any reason the tech feels that it's unsafe or they don't want the operation to continue, they can press that and the cart will stop operation immediately. In terms of usability, we wanted to make sure the cart was as easy to maneuver and also use in the data center for the, for the technicians since it would uh, be such a critical function to servicing uh, liquid cooling. So one thing that was very important is that every system has quick connect and disconnects. This prevents leakage when, um, when connecting a hose and also makes it very easy for the techs to connect the hoses. Second, we can talk about mobility. Two of the casters are locked and fixed in place, and two have a full 360 degree rotation. This allows for easier turning through the data center halls, especially if you have those tight 90 degree turns you have to make. Additionally, we wanted to make sure that they could overcome at least a one inch gap so that the cart wouldn't be stubs, and now you have to again start the cart's movement. Now uh, to talk about why we did, how we designed this for serviceability, we have Sarab. Thanks, Jared. So uh, now that we have looked at the different functions and design of this maintenance cart, let's turn our attention towards some of the data center side of things. Now, like we mentioned before, one of the use cases of uh, this cart is to be able to service an ALC rack. And, um, and to service that, uh, design for serviceability becomes an important factor, both from an operational efficiency and ease of use perspective. Let's take a closer look at what this means. So when we talk about optimizing for serviceability, we can group that into six buckets for the cart. All these six buckets have direct influence on the design of this maintenance cart. Let's walk through some examples. So uh, one of the things that we mentioned before was the cart is equipped with a reservoir that holds coolant. The volume of this reservoir will affect the number of racks we can service before a refill is required. However, if the volume is kept too large, it will add a lot of weight to the maintenance cart, which will make it difficult to move in the data center. Thus, a trade-off has to be made on the volume of this reservoir between operational efficiency and movability in the data center. In addition to this, Jared also talked about the QTs, or quick disconnects, that enable the technician to quickly disconnect and connect to an ALC rack uh, with, less, uh, with less amount of effort, which improves the overall ergonomics of the design. In addition to this, we also saw the HMI, or the human machine interface, which enables the technician to access the functions of this cart. These are placed in such a way that they are easily accessible and easy to understand by the technician. Uh, the cart also has two options for power. It can either use a battery that is integrated into the cart or a direct line if it's available in the data center. If a direct line is used, then the length of the power cable will affect the movability of the cart. And if a battery is used, then the total battery capacity will affect the number of carts, a uh, number of racks we can service before a charging is required. So we can see that design for serviceability is an important consideration that has been factored into this design. So as the industry moves towards adopting more liquid cool hardware, one of the challenges for us would be to understand how we can manage and service fluid in the data center in an efficient, safe, reliable, and consistent manner. 
And this card is an approach to address that challenge. If you'd like to know more about this card, uh, please reach out to Jared at the email given on the slide. And uh, if we have some time, we'd love to take some questions. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.